Okay, so day two at Matt's house. Uh, he's off at the gym and I'm in here installing more of these uh, the list of cabinets. So this is where we're at. We got that closet in and what we decided to do, what I thought would be best is to bolt them together because you, t you theoretically could just put them in, use the leveling feet, level them and have them just sit there and you know, probably with enough weight and if they weren't on the Swiss tracks, which is a little bit slippery, they would stay put. But to, to have them draw tight, you know, nice like this, there are holes that line up that you bolt through. So I'm using 3 8 bolts, nuts and washers to bolt, the, bolt each, each section together. Um, I also screwed um, through the cabinet, through the closet and into this cabinet. You can see I used uh, some self drilling, self tapping screws through the beef, beefiest part of the cabinet, which is this rail, which also comes through this beefy part of the this cabinet here, it's right about there, which is doubled up too. So that sucked that nice and tight. Um, I will probably throw a couple screws into the upper. Um, I probably don't need to because these kind of float. We can slide them and I'll show you how those work. There's a cleat that mounts on the wall. This is pretty slick. I like this a lot better than I do the, the Sonic sitting on the rail. So this, you don't need those uprights for, uh, you know, like you do with the Sonics, but this is pretty solid. So these, these uh, were tap conning these into the, block wall and then there's an aluminum hook on the back side I'll show you what that looks like so you get top and bottom done and then you come over here and you see the the uppers they've got they've got this this block Actually, I think I'm not sure that is aluminum it might be a steel anyway so you can see from the side here oh yeah you can see where it hooks onto the cleat top and bottom so that's a pretty slick set up. So you just install all those across and then you can just take your uppers and you know a minute each and you can sit them in place and if you've got your cleats nice and level and and uh, parallel and the right distance apart you could get your up all your cleats installed and put your uppers in in about five minutes depending. I mean with this section we could probably do it in five minutes once the cleats are installed. So that's that's where I'm at. I've got a level line. Now this is where the uppers are going to stop here and then we're going to have a gap for the TV which goes in the center. So what I'll do is, I've got these all done. The next thing is because we need to set the closet distance based off of the bases, I think with this section I'll probably do the bases next, get the closet installed and then build off of the closet for the next three uppers. That way we have a nice tight fit against the closet because if I, if I try to measure off and we're even an eighth inch off, um, it won't look right because the reveal where the cabinets come together, there'll be a gap. Um, so anyway, long story short, I'm going to continue through. We'll kind of take you through it. It's very easy to install, very easy to level up. Um, and then there is a toe kick, which is wrapped in these paper. There's a toe kick. Once you're done leveling, get everything set. There's a toe kick that goes down here that hides this or the majority of this gap down here. So um, we do have a really out of level floor. It's sloped. From there is the high point where that closet is, which is where we started. Suck the feet up. The back left corner is really high. So that, that foot is sucked all the way up. Started from there and worked from left to right because the floor slopes this way. So anyway, by the time we get out here, I'm probably going to have to shim under the foot because these feet aren't quite long enough for how much slope there is in this garage. It starts to level off right about here, but I was just about running out of... Uh, of uh, adjustable foot right on this side. So I've got some plywood um, cut up right here that I was gonna use for uh, shimming the backside. Don't need them, so I'll probably use those to, uh, to shim the feet here. Um, and then once they're all bolted together, it's not going anywhere. And you won't see those because there'll be a toe kick hiding them. Anyway, so I'm gonna get, get going, try to get this next one in uh, before Matt gets home, so that way he sees some progress and makes him happy. He had a bad day yesterday because we had a couple that uh, the shipper or shipping company kind of scratched up. So it wasn't a pleasant day for him. <laughs> so we're trying to make him happy when he gets home. It'll be more complete. But anyway, I'm going to carry on. Okay. So last bolt to go in this section, which is this top bolt. So you have to remove the drawers and then you can see, you can catch that Chris right there. There's a hole through it that lines up with the other cabinet. So it doesn't really matter which way you go, but I'm using 3 8 bolt, which is, it's a 3 8 little over, probably a 30 second over 3 8 hole. So, 
three eighths bolt nut and washers. And then that's it. Sucked them up nice and tight. So put the drawers back in. So you have to take the slide out. This is how this goes in. Key's in the back, and it goes in here, and then this little plastic clip snaps right in this rectangular notch, and that holds that in. That's as simple as that. And you can adjust these drawers, that's what's amazing. And so if you wanted a fat drawer up here, you could swap this fat drawer with two of these two drawers, and you can take the, the slides out, put the slides there, and put the fat drawer up here. I think, I think it's two of those for one of those. Yeah, it is. So, you can interchange them if you wanted to on these. I don't, not all of them because like this isn't double width this, but these are double width of these two drawers. So if that makes sense. So you can swap them a little bit if you want to. And I'll leave this top one out because I have to bolt that up there. So next thing is I'm going to slide this cabinet in place and then uh, get it leveled up. Greasy handprints, everything. Okay, that is still level. Thanks, Chris. Okay. All right. We well, can see how much the floor slopes because we started at basically zero there and that's an inch and a quarter difference in elevation drop from there to there because those legs in the far left the feet are adjustable feet are all the way up on that far cabinet so that means from there to this point we've we've uh, dropped an inch and a quarter and I'm assuming it's gonna be even more as time goes on. Let's see here, if we're level. Yeah, we're a little bit high here. So this side's probably like an inch and three eighths slower. So I think these feet will reach to get to this elevation, but this side, I think I'm gonna to have to put some shim under the feet, which I will use this. key is getting it under there. So I think because I have the pallet jack, I can slide the pallet jack under here. Once I get it up a ways, lift it straight up and slide these under. So I think that's gonna be my plan. First things first, start raising it. Thing is there's paint. I think they're nine millimeter. Well, they end up being a nine millimeter fits them. And there's paint on them, so you kind of got to push through the paint in order to get it the socket on there. Okay. Oh, no, that's dead nut. Yeah. Yeah, that's really good, okay. So, okay. <clears throat> All right, so to get, as I mentioned before, to get the other part of the slide out, you see this little plastic uh, retainer, I guess you'd call it, because this will not come out with that end. So what I do is I pinch it here and just pop it out, and it comes out. So you need to get those out in order to get through that holes on the back side, you know, behind the, the, the other part of the slides.
do is duplicate what we have from, from top of closet to here. So that way, when the uprights come together, they'll be at the, they'll look the same, the same real top. I mean, we have our level line already, but just, so 45 and 9 sixteenths. Yeah, we're at 42 and a quarter, 42 and 3 eighths. So got to come up away. So I think we're gonna need to do, definitely gonna have to shim it. Okay, so what we want to do is on top of the top, we're going to do a, a six inch tall backsplash, right? Out of, Out of the same material, exactly the same color, everything. And then what we want to do is we want to put in the center of this cabinet here, right there, a receptacle sideways. Okay. And then... Do you and, want them to drill for that? Yeah, yeah, I want them to cut at the rectangular hole. And then on the back side, router a knot uh, 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 from okay. plug to plug to plug so I can run Romex through there. And then I'll tie into that plug down there. And then I'm gonna put four receptacles in sideways. So one in the center of this cabinet, one in the center of this one, one in the center of this one, and one in the center of this one. So what we gotta do is pull this out about a half an inch. Luckily they're all attached now. So another quarter inch. here as long as the level reads the same in both directions it doesn't matter you know what I mean but people really get you're not obsessed you don't have a stable level it's like yeah I do they're three hundred dollars pardon my French edit that out Chris <laughs> this is a family channel So what I'm doing is I'm using, these are for trimming out the ends of the cabinet. So where one ends, like that upper there, where the upper ends, this trims out so you don't see a gap behind, so it hides the cleat. So, but in the meantime, I'm, I'm keeping one on this end because this is exposed, right? And then where the third cabinet ends, where the TV will be, we'll use one for sure. But for now, so this one's staying, but I'm using this one just as a spacer to get my distance correct and then lay it out. I get this plumb so that these are on the same, you know, uh, plumb line and mark them and then drill them.
All right, let me take you through the, I guess, semi-finished product. We haven't done the countertops, the vice, the TV, the speakers, all that stuff. So I'll kind of talk about that after we kind of go through the cabinets here. So a couple of observations. You know, I've been dreaming of Lista as I talked in the beginning of this video series uh, since it was probably closer to 2006. And I saw the red cabinets that they had. I'm like, man, what are those things? I don't want red ones, but what are they? And they were Lista cabinets. They were these sort of Lista type. So I've wanted Lista since the beginning, and now I've got them. So these are fabricated, not, uh, not like precisely made. So these are built, so they stamp them, and then some dude is like bolting these things together, putting them together. They're powder, coat, powder coating by hand. Whereas the Sonics are made in some precision Taiwanese factory. Uh, so the corners aren't a square. The powder coating isn't as perfect. The, 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 the drawers and doors aren't adjustable. They're not as accurate. Um, this stuff is made for industry. And I think that industry cares more about, I guess, how heavy they are and sturdy they are and not so much you know, worrying about the, you know, the fit and finish. So the fit and finish is a, I would say an eight out of 10. You know, you have things like, like the you know, drips or I guess this isn't a drip, but like where they don't, um, they do, the, or the weld or the bend, they don't shave off or they have a little extra powder coating buildup. Um, the, the doors are not adjustable really on any of these. It's just a simple pole style where you have the little insert so you can't adjust the door. So you have some, some wonkiness you can see some of the uh some of the little tack welds and things like that on it uh, but what you're buying is this i mean i take this thing out i'm 240 pounds and i mean this, this thing doesn't even break a sweat you know the drawers could slide in and out with you know with me in it so you're buying clearly in my case substantial overkill but that's kind of what I do. So the powder coating, like things like this that you notice, like they, they don't kind of finish, you know? And so if you are going to buy a Lista, you need to be prepared for that. And I knew this going in and I still wanted this setup. Uh, the pro is that I can get whatever color I want. I mean, this color is fantastic. This is called pure white. Uh, you can see the white difference. I don't know if the, co the color balance on the camera is going to pick it up. This span is white, but it makes it look pink, you know? And you see the just pure white, which is really incredible. So you can get whatever color you want. I mean, basically any color we can color to sample for a few hundred bucks. I need to add up what this array is, but it's probably somewhere around 50 grand worth of cabinets. Uh, and so you're paying, I have to go and do some calculations on this versus Sonic MSS Plus on you know what the cost difference is, but I think this is at a premium. So you're giving up some fit and finish for pure function. Like this is just pure, perfect function. You know, the Austrian drawer glides hold, you know, like I said, hold 440 pounds a drawer. Um, you, you have the, uh, I'll get into this later, but you have the, uh, the, the drawer um, organization little things, little cups that you put in so you can organize stuff. Um, the cleat system to mount these to the wall is great. Uh, but you know, it's missing the, like for, for example, we're gonna have to do a, because of the stem wall, we're gonna have to do a, a backsplash for our, for our little trim piece for our countertops. So there's some, some things that you need to, to take into consideration. Their toe kick, I think, is better than Sonic's because it's an adjustable toe kick. Um, but the, uh, the, the, the main pro to this is if you're after function and you're after some sort of custom color, custom setup. We're gonna do a TV here, so I'm gonna do a 75 inch Sony and the, the A90J, the mini LED stuff, uh, last year's version, there's still some available, so I think I'm gonna grab one of those. They're like half price of what they used to be. So I'm gonna do the mini LED and then I'm gonna figure out what I do with, the, uh, with my audio system. So stay tuned for that, I'll share with you what I'm planning there. So the way this array is set up, you have the two roughly, you know, these are equivalent to the 1540 from Sonic, where you have a large top drawer, uh, and then you have the, the wide drawer, which holds, holds their XD. So we kind of, de we designed this so that it 
pretty accurately holds the XD style foam inlays. Uh, and then I um, have a little bit of work to do to figure out exactly um, the, the width of these has to, uh, we have to you know, get the, the dividers. So I'm gonna get a bunch of the divider stuff here to, uh, to really fi figure out how to make the foam inlays fit perfectly. Um, the closets are freaking cool because, I mean, look at how much room this has. I mean, they're taller than the Sonic stuff by about a foot. And then these are much, much sturdier. These drawers hold 444 pounds for the, the, the uh, shelves. Uh, so I have the ability to, and you have infinite adjustability, uh, where, you know, Sonic, you don't have that, that capability. So if you need some more adjustable you know, capability, adjustment capability, or you wanted to put more shelves, the beauty of this stuff is we can customize and build it whatever way you want. You can do as many shelves, as many drawers, as high as you want, as short as you want, as tall as you want, as wide as you want. So we can custom make you know pretty much anything. So that's I think the big advantage. But like the doors aren't as aren't as square, aren't quite as nice uh, because I think in industry they don't care. They just want it to be pure function, and so the. The, um, I think your, the, 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 your decision comes down to your preference of functionality. You know, what are you looking to accomplish? If you want some cool color, then this is the way to go. If you want, you know, some of the best cabinets on the planet. But just know this is, there's some American jank to this. You know, the American made jank. This stuff is made in the Northeast. So there's a little bit of that that comes with this. There's some, there's some like runs in the, uh, in the, in the powder coating. Uh, so you just have to prepare yourself for that. So I'm gonna have this all completely organized. I'm gonna have the drawer system organized. I'm gonna have the, um, uh, I'm gonna figure out their, their, their system for putting all the little, uh, little cups and stuff in place. I'm gonna figure out a, 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 a solution for, this is the one that took the impact for the garbage can. All right now the 44 gallon root fits in here so i might just do this setup uh, and i think what i'm going to do is do something similar i did with the saber cabinets for microfiber towels i'm going to um, probably put like a light and dark pull out hay filler or something like that for this i've got to figure out um, power as well where we're going to put power and list has a whole power strip solution but I'm super pleased. So don't misconstrue my comments here of fit and finish. This is exactly what I wanted. I'm uh, just pointing out some of the things so you know what you're getting into. If you're gonna spend you know, $50,000 on cabinets, you know, $30,000 on cabinets, um, what you're getting into. In general, you know, the Sonic stuff doesn't have a lot of choice. You've got four or five, six cabinets, um, but they're, the fit and finish on it is darn near perfection. Um, this, you have a lot more choice a lot sturdier, the drawers are heavier duty, uh, the cabinet setup is more customizable, the color choice obviously is a big, big plus. Uh, and so that ability to do that, you know, this is one of the reasons why I took on Lista. The reason I didn't take on Lista early on was because it's so daunting. Just one of the many catalogs they have is this, what, 297 pages I was thumbing through last night. Uh, they make so many different things and become it was really really difficult for us to sort of narrow that down so we could build a system for you but if you'd like us to design the stuff we are lista approved we are lista set up um, you'll see a lista page show up on the site uh, with some pricing ideas so you can get an idea what each thing costs uh, and uh, know also that anytime you're doing this kind of stuff and we filled up an entire Old Dominion truck. So, I mean, I didn't look at the pricing yet, but this is probably somewhere around three or three or 4,000 bucks to ship to you. So you've got that, you know, factored in the pricing of, of your uh, cabinet array. But anyway, thanks for watching the series. More on Lista to come and um, we'll be sure to update you when I do the audio video setup, when I do the countertops and uh, as I do each drawer and organize, get the foam inlays and setting up the, my Milwaukee Master Collection, setting up you know, power, setting up um, you know, drawers with all of the you know, um, uh, hardware with all of like nuts and bolts all organized and stuff like that. So I'll show you that for sure. So thanks for watching and uh, hit us up if we can uh, help you set up your garage. This garage is the next evolution in lighting, lighting control, fans, lift, you know, the bike lift, 
the list of cabinet array, drawer organization, all of that stuff are continuing to solve problems. The double pressure washer uh, doing uh, things like span and some structured wiring, the vacuum system. So stay tuned for more updates on this kind of stuff as we uh, continue to perfect the end-to-end -end solution that I've been chasing what seems to be my whole life. So thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next one.